going through the Gospel of Mark, and if you like action movies, then you're going to like Mark. Because Mark is primarily focused on the actions, the things that Jesus did. And so it's kind of like going through a movie, scene after scene, you know, this happened and then this happened. And then every once in a while, he'll take a break from the action, and he'll get, include this real lengthy section of Jesus' teaching. And so there's just a lot more red lettering in Matthew, Luke, and John. So what that means for us is that when Mark was going through things and trying to figure out what he was going to include in his gospel, uh, he was just a lot more selective as far as the teachings of Jesus. So what that means is we're studying the book. When we come to a section like we're going to be reading this morning, we better pay attention because Mark is saying this is a really important teaching. And that's especially true with what we're reading this morning, what we're going to be reading about. He's going to be talking about the severity of sin and the severity of hell both of which are just unpopular teachings in our culture, and even in the religious world today. So we're in Mark 9, verse 42. It says, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. We'll stop right there. But I want you to notice the transition in verse 41. He talks about somebody giving a cup of water in his name, not losing their reward. Now in verse 42, he's warning about somebody going, trying to cause somebody else to stumble, possibly losing their reward. It's quite the opposite attitude. It's the idea of being this hindrance or being this uh, stumbling block or enticing somebody else to sin. Really, it's anything that we do that hurts or injures somebody else's relationship with God. And Jesus says, before you do that, it's just better to put a millstone around your neck, which is this huge stone that they use to crush and grind the wheat, and just throw yourself into the sea. Jesus couldn't be any more serious or any more graphic in describing this. But what Jesus is doing, he's sending out this strong warning. Don't you even think about causing one of my little children to sin. You, you think a millstone's bad, be put around your neck, thrown in the ocean. You've got something else coming. And people look at this and they think, well, Jesus, that's not really loving at all. But I look at this and I think, wow, he's really just standing up for those who are his. He's warning them about trying to carry away those who belong to him and those who believe in him, his little ones, his children. It's really actually a loving passage. Now look what he says in verse 43. He goes from talking about warning about causing somebody else to stumble to things that cause us to stumble. So he says, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life main rather than having two hands to go into hell. Into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life lame rather than having two feet to be cast into hell and to the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two to be cast into hell fire, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be seasoned with fire and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. So Jesus tells us to cuff our hands, cut off our feet, pluck out our eye when it causes us to sin. But it's this picture of self imputation doesn't even make sense if it was literal. But it's violent, it's graphic, it's meant to grab us by our collar and say, hey, wake up, you got to understand this. you got to know the seriousness about this. And he's trying to tell us two things. He's trying to tell us about the realities of hell. Um, no one talked more about eternal punishment and torment than Jesus. In fact, Jesus taught more about hell than he did about heaven. Think about it. No one knew more about heaven and hell than Jesus. He'd been there. He'd been to heaven. He had created hell. He, he knew what it was like. In fact, it's loving for Jesus to have warned us about the realities of just this awful place. And so no one would say that it was not loving for a parent to warn his child before he runs out into the street and gets hit by a car. That's incredibly loving. That's what any good parent would do. And number two, he's trying to get us to see that it's so bad that whatever we have to give up in this life to make sure we don't go there, it's going to be worth it. That the gruesomeness of this passage ought to get us to stop and think about the seriousness of our sin and the necessity of sacrifice. That sometimes we really do have to give up our life in this life in order to gain it. That sometimes the things that we got to give up the most are the things that we're most attached to. That if something causes us to sin, it's better to go through life without it than it is to find yourself in eternal punishment. 